All right. All right. You ready? Ready. All right. All right. How, was your, how was your trip? It was great. It was great. Like, Jamaica was a good place. It had the, the real hotel I was at. Oh, yeah. Like, it was, it was pretty good. It was right. relaxing. It was like a week of relaxation. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So, all right. This is a Gus Ali podcast for for this week's AEW review, Rampage review, at our news. So, let's start with Dynamite review. Yes, we're going to start with the Dynamite review and I'm just going to go through what's, what happened in the card and then we'll discuss uh, one by one. All right, so mm-hmm. CM Punk and FTR went against Max Caster and the Gun Club in a six-man tag team match. John Moxie went against Daniel Garcia. Ruby Soho and Tony Storm against Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, and Jamie Hayter. Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, Darby Allen, Christian Cage, and Matt Hardy tagged each, with each other against the Young Bucks, Red Dragon, and Hikuleo. From New Japan. Wardlow went against J.D. Drake. Johnny Elite's open challenge also had an open, he had an open challenge against a mystery opponent. And then MJF had a promo. Uh, so th- those are the things that happened in the June 1st edition of AW Dynamite. So we're going to go one by one now and we're going to start off with CM Punk and FTR. CM Punk, a newly crowned champion after double or nothing this past weekend. FTR, you know, tagging with him for the first time, I think. And then Max Caster and the Gun Club, they went against each other, and Sam Punk and FTR got the win. What do you think about this? Well, I think it was a good start for Sam Punk's reign as champion. It was also a good start for Punk after after the pay per view, you know. And and we got a little shine on FTR. And after the match, we saw Sam Punk talk about the Forbidden Door pay per view. He come he come out ta- Takahashi and Hanahashi. Tanahashi, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so this was, this match was really great. I think uh, it was very professional wrestling. I think this is what, uh, this is the type of match that I really like. And obviously an FTR match and a CM Punk match is going to be like that. And uh, yeah, I think uh, CM Punk uh, did start off his uh, reign pretty well. I mean, I, he had a little bit of, you know, um, goofed up spots at, uh, at some points, but you know, that's going to come with age. I mean, obviously, I think that's the point where uh, he has experience. He knows what he's doing, but sometimes, you know, it's too fast-paced or something like that. But that uh, he's still a, a well-deserved champion. And uh, as you said, he, he said who – he asked who his Forbidden Door opponent was going to be. And it was, turned out to be the ace of New Japan Pro Wrestling, Hiroshi Tanahashi. So we're going to assume that Hiroshi Tanahashi is going to uh, – Go after the AW Championship against CM Punk at Forbidden Door. All right, yeah. All right, so if that's it, I mean, CM Punk and FTR deserved the win, and and yeah, that was a good decision, right? Um, so if that's it for that, let's go on to the next part, which I would say is the most uh, talked about, you know, segment of this year and perhaps in a while. It's MGF came in, coming out to have an interview, have a promo. And this was an all-time great promo, uh, exemplifying a lot of the truths, you know, hidden truths of AW. What do you think about uh, this pipe bomb that MGF uh, put forth? I believe that he delivered a great pipe bomb. He does have some points where Tony Khan bringing in ex-WWE superstars with the excessive, you know, there was like Keith Lee, Swerve Scott, the Hardys, Athena, Mm-hmm. Halfway Stokely, halfway the rest, but still, yeah, them Jeff may have a huge point. I think this whole thing is a is a is a work for a storyline, where it lead to AJ MJF winning the WWE Champion for CM Punk and walking out of AEW. Okay, nah, that's a that's a way to do it. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, obviously, we're gonna talk about the MJF situation, you know, after, but uh, I mean. Obviously, that situation kind of enhances this a little bit. I mean, obviously, that's kind of like the background of it. We already knew that MJF and AW Tony kind of specifically were having problems in terms of contract negotiations. Uh, MJF thinks that he should be paid a bit more, um, and you know, and Tony kind of isn't you know kind of budging, isn't letting him you know you know yeah. 
make his contract a little bit bigger. But uh, obviously, I'm Jeff just aired out a lot of like real. You could tell that it was real frustrations, even if it was worked. Obviously, it's on dynamite. It's gonna be a work, you know. But it, these thi- these things were real. This is coming from him, the person. This, this, these are real things that he's saying. Obviously, it's pre-planned things that they they had him say. But these are real feelings that he has towards Tony Khan and the company and uh, the way that they're going about their business right now. And obviously. You know, he did mention that, you know, uh, Tony Khan is more, you know, this, you know, he is willing to give more money to these ex guys, even though they, you know, can't, he said he can't, they can't lace his boots, which means, you know, he can't, they can't, you know, go one-on-one on him on, in the ring. Like, he's better in the ring than they are, and they br- he brings in more ratings than they do as well, so he kind of deserves, he thinks he deserves uh, more ratings, you know? Yeah. Uh, more more money. Yeah. And uh and and I guess I was, the most important part about this promo was the end. Uh when he told Tony Khan to fire him. Uh that he doesn't want to be there anymore. He's gonna give his spot to whoever wants it right now. And that he told Tony Khan to fire him and I mean obviously this leads, you know, in a lot of interest for the next following weeks of what's gonna happen next with MGF and I'm sure what happens next is gonna have real implications. And the real life of MGF and AW. Yeah. But yeah, this was a a historic. I think it was a historical uh, moment in AW history. And just kind of exemplified what how big of a vet. And maybe he already has a, a contract with AW. Uh, we don't know that. But nobody, none of the reporters have reported that. But uh, if he has, good yeah. for him. If he hasn't, then AW better act right now or else. There's a true possibility that he might leave. Yeah. But yes, uh, all-time great promo. Uh, do you have anything else to add? Uh, well, I got asked to else there. Maybe in the long run, I think NJ will resign with AEW. I thought at first gonna gonna try going for go for WWE, but but in the end, he's probably gonna stay with AEW. That's a possibility. I think I think there's still a possibility he might leave. I think AW knows what they're supposed to do now, and now it's a matter of whether AW will do it or not. And if they don't, they know what might happen next, you know. But I don't think AW wants that to escalate to that point, you know. He's already said that he's willing to go to WWE, but uh, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully everything resolves itself and that we get a good storyline out of it. I suppose. All right. So if that's it for that one, uh, we're gonna go to the next one, which oh, also the one thing that I wanted to say is that I counted all the ex WWE guys that appeared in this AW Dynamite and I counted 18 guys and girls were on this AW Dynamite and I was I was blown away by that because I'm sure that's a lot more than you know, the AW originals. I didn't count like John Moxie for example, I didn't count him because I see him as an original but like ex WWE guys that came into AW as ex WWE guys, it was 18 and two of them when the next segment, which was Johnny Elite having his uh, open challenge against anyone that was contracted to, to AW, and it ended up being Miro, uh, what do you think about this? You know, quick match. Mm. This quick match was pretty good. It got Miro over, over as a beast. I think Miro's going to dominate AW. And he's going to get, he's going to get, try to get back the TST champion for Scorpio Sky. Because lately, Scorpio, because Sco- lately Scorpio Sky's title reign has been a it's been flat lately. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Um, I think Miro, obviously, uh, a fan favorite, and he's a big brute, and there's n- nothing that uh, he's he's very easy to like, you know. But uh, I think a TNT championship, or maybe even a, a challenge for the AW championship against CM Punk, I think that would be a good one too. I think I've said this before, but I think Miro coming in. Should be more of a main eventer rather than a mid carder. I mean, he has the support to be it, and I, I think he's a, 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 you know, a plausible threat towards an AW championship. And maybe he might not win it uh, in the near future, but he's a viable contender. And I would believe um, him beating anyone, you know. But uh, yeah, I think Miro coming back is a great thing uh, for AW and for the fans, especially. Yeah. Then. Next was a 
promo segment or I think it was a JAS promo segment that I but I'm just gonna we're just gonna you know generalize it to Eddie Kingston um laying up, laying forth a challenge towards JAS and that challenge was blood and guts. Uh what do you think about this announcement, this uh this challenge Eddie Kingston uh put forth towards the JAS? Hmm. I can't stand up. Well, this this match will be like a hair versus hair. I seen Jericho head getting his head shaved, but I'm seeing Ortiz getting head shaved as well. It could be either way. Oh yes, yeah, so there, there was another. There's a match also. Santan, I mean Ortiz versus Chris Jericho hair versus hair match. I think, I think, I think Chris Jericho might get his hair. Um, usually the heel loses those matches, those kinds of matches. Yeah. So I think uh, Chris Jericho will get his head shaved, and it's gonna be interesting to see a a bald Chris Jericho. I mean, we've always seen him with hair. Let's see how he looks like uh, with a bald head. But that that match was um, made, and also the Blood and Guts match. Yes, and Eddie yes. and the BC. What do you think about that? That Blood Gut match, Blood and Guts match, is going to be good. It's going to put together. It's going to be a big matchup. Like last year's Blood and Guts was was a little, was an ending was bad. So this but this is Blood. So this time, this blood guts match, blood guts match will have a bad ending. It will, it will actually have an improvement. And and let's see. And I'm thinking the BCC Eddie Kingston team will get get the win because last time Jericho and his crewmates won one like last night's double or nothing big match anarchy match. Yes. Yeah, I, I think I I agree too. I think Eddie Kingston. And the VCC will will win this match as well, but hopefully they, you know, hopefully they, uh, you know, do this blood and guts match the way it is supposed to be. I mean, I think they might add in fire into it because that seems to be a, a something that they're implementing very heavily into this feud. Hopefully they don't kind of overuse it with the fire, but I mean, um, it seems like they're going to the extreme. Um, for this one, I think you're gonna have to pay off uh, Eddie Kingston um, putting Chris Jericho on fire, but I don't know how you do that without you know disrespecting the blood and guts or war games concept match. But whatever, um, we'll get to that point when we get to that point. But yes, that's announced, and we're gonna continue to the next the next thing that happened in this uh, AW Dynamite, which was the tag team match of Jungle Boy, Luchasaurus, Christian Cage, Darby Allen, and Matt Hardy going against Young Bucks, Red Dragon, and Hikuleo. I'm going to be honest, I didn't see this match. I didn't. I kind of turned off the TV after the MGF promo, <laughs> so I kind of didn't see it, the entirety of Dynamite, but, so I don't know who won this match, but I'm sure it was a great match, was it not? Yeah. Who, who won this match? Who will win this match? This boy guts match. I want to see Eddie Kingston going over. No, no, no. I, I, I'm. Uh, I transition to the next match, the ten man tag team match. Uh, oh, of the ten man tag. Yeah. Who won this match? I, I didn't see it. It was like the Bucks and Adam Cole. They they won the match. It was like a ten man tag, like PWG style kind of match. It was like flips, kicks, and stuff. It was basically a PWG style matchup. Okay. The Bucks got the win. Team, the Bucks, Young Bucks team got the win. So mostly, yeah. They put over the Bucks, Bucks, and Cole, and stuff. And come for, after that, we were for Tony Khan. The Young Bucks will be facing the Lucha Bros tomorrow, Friday, on Rampage tomorrow. On Rampage, yes. Yeah. Uh, and I think maybe the Young Bucks might challenge... For the AW Tag Team Championship, I think they're next, even though they lost to the Hardy Boys last well, last Sunday on Double Nothing. But uh, because I think uh, the Young Bucks pinned uh, the champions in this match, so maybe that's you know probable cause for them to challenge for the Tag Team Championships, which I don't agree with. I don't know how that works in the ranking systems. So I don't know how that works in terms of booking in general, but I think it might happen. At, Maybe it makes sense. But that Ray Phoenix and, and Pentagon versus Young Bucks match on Rampage this week is going to be pretty good. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. So next we had a Tony Schiavone interview uh, with 
Athena Palmer, the former Ember Moon, who debuted on last Sunday's Double or Nothing. Uh, what do you think about this promo, what, her, what she said, and and everything? It was a great promo. Like, it put over a lot of things. You know, um, like, the promo had, like, Athena talk about last night's match debut. And we also had, like, we also, like, had, we also had, like, Sophie Highway with Jay Cargill going to Athena's face. It was pretty, it was pretty like a, it was pretty like a segment. Then, then Athena, Stan Lanner and Jay, and Anna Jay got involved. It was like head to head with Jay Cargill, Red Velvet, and it was like, Ember. it was that blue hair girl. Oh yeah, Kara Hogan. Yeah, Kara Hogan. Yeah, so yeah, that, that's basically what happened. Obviously, the next challenger seems to be um, Athena for the TBS Championship. Maybe she might win. I don't know, but yeah. uh, she's gonna have a match on Rampage, I believe, against Kara Hogan. So we'll see how we'll see how good or how much she impresses on Friday. Yeah. Um, so in the next match for the SAW Dynamite June First Edition was Wardlow coming off a big win against MJF on on Sunday and double or nothing, We're going against JD Drake. Um, and Warlow got the win, the victory, uh, with the Powerbomb Symphony. What do you What do you think about this match? What do you think about Warlow in general? He's the number one uh, ranked guy right now, so it seems like he's going to be the next guy to uh, challenge uh, for C- uh, for CM Punk's championship. Assuming that uh, he'll still be number one ranked after Hiro Tanahashi. Uh, Hiro Tanahashi. Well, well, I think Warlow sh- will should have the WWE AEW World Champion like. Like when the tire like, like all out or full gear, but mostly full gear because all out CM Punk might face Okada, I think. But right, but right now, like I'm all for for Wallet Wardlow to win the AEW World Title from CM Punk. So you think and that Wardlow's a big guy? He's really good. Like after this match, it was like Mark Sterling bringing his attorney, bringing his security guys. Kerry getting beaten up, getting involved. Then Warlow ripped out the cut that thing and beat up a security guy as usual. Yeah, yeah. So, so you think that CM Punk is gonna go against Okada? Yeah, most. I think he's gonna face Okada at All Out. All Out. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I think uh, I don't know about that one, but uh, it, it might happen. I don't know, but. Wardlow, uh, for sure, I think uh, it might be the first challenger after Tanahashi, and man, maybe he's the next champion. I don't expect him to win the championship. I don't. I don't think he will, and I don't think he will win the championship for a long while. He's a future champion for sure, but I don't think he's a uh, the next champion. But yeah, so this segment was really good. Uh, obviously, the lawsuit from Mark Sterling afterwards, and and you know, Wardlow's very much over with the AW audience and. He's a great talent right now, so hopefully they take advantage of him. Yeah. Uh, so the next one, the next match in this it's June 1st edition of AW Dynamite was a tag team match, a women's division tag team match. Ruby Soho and Tony Storm versus Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, the Owen Hart, woman, Owen Hart Cup champion, and Jamie Hayden. What do you think about this tag team match? Again, I didn't see this part of the WWE Dynamite, so I don't know who won this it was match. A great ta- it was a great tag team match. And, and it was a great hit hard hit women's tag match. It was it was did a great job. There were there were no there were less there were like less botches and it was a decent tag women's tag match. And Ruby Soho and Tony Storm got the win. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh so this might you know Further the the feud that was started between Tony Tony Storm, Ru, Ruby Soho versus Dark Doctor Brick Baker, and uh, this was a this has been a good you know story, a good feud of good uh, women's division storyline, and I hope hopefully they uh, could make good matches out of it. I think these are four great uh, wrestlers, and any combination will have a good you know wrestling match. So hopefully uh, they do. Okay, so next. Uh, was the main event. This is the last thing that happened in AEW Dynamite, the main event. John Moxley versus Daniel, Daniel Garcia. And a very hard-hitting match, main event. I'm assuming John Moxley got the win. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. He got, yeah, Moxley got the win. Okay. It was a big, hard hitting, bloody matchup. Mox was mostly bloody. And and there was like, there were, Jericho tried to interfere, but Kingston prevented Moxley from getting involved. I mean, I pre- Kingston prevented Jericho from getting involved. It was a big interference match kind of match. Yes. Yeah. And both of these guys are coming out of a, a crazy end decree in the arena match in, uh, this past Sunday on Double or Nothing. So. They were both beat up. Uh, I think uh, the reason why John Moxley got busted open was because his staples on his forehead kind of got pulled out from Daniel Daniel Garcia. So this was a lot of more, you know, pain after, you know, all all the pain that they were suffering from the Anarchy in the Reno match. So I'm sure it was a great match, and uh, and John Moxley got the deserved win uh, to get his, you know, win back from the loss that he suffered on top or nothing. So... You know, great main event and great show overall. You know, an all-time promo from MGF and yeah. and great wrestling matches as well. So, great June first edition of AW Dynamite. Yeah. That's it for this review. And what are we? What do we have next? Uh, we got we got the uh, uh, we got we still have to review the Rampage view, which is going to come out next, people. But we could talk about MJF. Yeah, so I think we're going to talk about the MJF. Uh, whole situation that happened this past weekend um, you were out in Jamaica so obviously we we couldn't get to we didn't get to discuss this whole situation but um, this past weekend uh, on Saturday it was reported that he had missed a meet and greet that was scheduled for the fan fest of Delver Nothing and MJF wasn't there Samoa Joe was another person but that was something separate uh, that had nothing to do with what MJF's situation was about but it was reported that MGF was, wasn't at the meet and greet, and it was also reported that there was a plane booked to New Jersey um, for MGF, and th- there was a whole lot of speculation whether MGF would get on this plane or not, or who booked this plane. Pe- people don't know who booked this plane. Uh, at least the reporters don't know who booked this plane uh, yeah. for MGF. And it ended up being that MGF didn't get on this plane. He There was also speculation on whether he was going to show up at Double or Nothing for his match against Wardlow, he did. Um, he showed up for that match, and he wrestled that match. He took the ten power bumps and lost. He got stretched out, stretched out yeah. of the you know thing, and then reportedly he left right after his match. He got there, you know, right at the time of his match. People said that backstage that uh, um, he wasn't even at the gorilla position when his once his uh, music hit. So. People didn't even know that he was there once his music hit. And he came out, he did his job, and and left. So that was the whole situation. Uh, this past uh, weekend, it was uh, the talk of the town uh, on Twitter or whatever. But what do you, what do you think about this whole situation? That Do you think um, that, that there was a point where MGF was supposed to leave, uh, you know, Las Vegas for New Jersey? Yeah, it would have been a point. It was, it, was, it was like a it was a goal to make sure like something it was like NJ wanted Tony Khan to get he want, I think NJ wanted to get Tony Khan's attention he might have did a great job but a little too much with it he may have pissed off the locker room so this is yeah. yes this is on NJF I hope Tony Khan and NJF had this resolved they did went to the sit down meeting, meeting in California so they will have this resolved Right, and that sit down meeting was scheduled for. I I, I was saying Monday, some people were saying Tuesday, but Sean Rasep was saying Monday that they sat down and had a conversation. And he said, after that point, he didn't know whether it was going to be a work or shoot. Before th- that, he said it, all of it was a shoot. Everything was real. Everything was as he was confirmed by him and by MJF himself at some points. So he said that past Monday, uh, he doesn't know whether it's a work or shoot. He says he it, he speculates it's a work. Now that they sat down and he doesn't know if they've come to an agreement on, on a deal, on a contract negotiation deal or not, or maybe they're just doing this on a, you know, you know, whatever contract uh, thing. But uh, hopefully um, everything is resoluted or everything is yeah. good or whatever. And uh, hopefully... Uh, MGF, you know, stays in AW, and if not, and hopefully he goes wherever he is happiest, and you know this gets resolved soon for him and for everybody. 
All right, let's get to Rampage. Yeah, so we're going to start off with Rampage. Let me just go through uh, through the matches that happened, everything that happened in Rampage. There's a big Rampage, a live Rampage in Ontario, Ontario, California, uh, the, the home of the Young Bucks. And that's where we are going to start off today, Young Bucks versus Lucha Brothers. Then after that, Powerhouse, Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks had uh, the, went against two under, unidentified jobbers. And then uh, Athena made her debut against Kira Hogan. And then there was, uh, you know, an induction ceremony for House of Black. And a, uh, AW's world champion, CM Punk, had a huge announcement to the crowd. After that, uh, after that, Scorpio Sky defended his TNT Championship versus Dante Martin in the main event of this event. So we're going to start off with the first match uh, that is Lucha Brothers versus Young Bucks. And the Young Bucks beat the Lucha Brothers in this match. What do you think about this match? And do you think it's the right decision to have the Young Bucks go over here? Well, it's necessary to get go over the, the Lucha Bros because they're most highly like like penciling to win the AEW tag belts, and most and second of all, they did it was a great match. The Lucha Bros and the Young Bucks, the Young Bucks did win this match. And again, they're penciling to win the AEW tag belts from Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy, and that will lead to Christian. I mean, Jungle. Christian turning heel on Jungle Boy or Jungle Boy turning heel on Luchasaurus? Yeah, that, those, those are the the hopes from the Twitter fans, yes. And uh, I thought this match was unbelievable. Obviously, you know, some I've, I've heard some complaints from some people that, you know, there's no real good reason to have this match. You know, it's not really a built-up match, but obviously it has, you know, history. I mean, this is one of the bigger rivalries in AW's history, especially in the tag team division. And you know, I guess that's enough story to have. And, yeah, I think I agree with you that uh, the Young Bucks are probably going to contend for the AW Championships next. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I would probably lean towards not a good idea because, I mean, the Young Bucks are, you know, they're always the ones on top. And, obviously, you know, they're the ones that, you know, draw the ratings and fanfare in any, you know, tag team match. And I thought this was going to be, you know, FTR's time or somebody else's time. But... But, you know, the Young Bucks are always going to deliver in their matches. Uh, people will always love it. And, yeah, it's a good it's it's a good chance that they might be the next champions. But we don't know. Maybe Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus beat the Young Bucks in this one. But uh, that's, you know, for the future. At this point in time, the Young Bucks beat the Lucha, uh, Lucha Brothers. And then we're going to go on to the next, next one. Okay. And that's Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks against two jobbers and you know, predictably, they beat these two jobbers. What do you think about this match? It's it wasn't really much, but what do you think about Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks? Powerhouse Hobbs and Ricky Starks. Um, Starks. Well, the, it was it was a good tag team matchup. It got them. Ba- it got the. It got Starks and Hobbs over, and they're building them for something very important in the future. Yes, I agree. I think uh, those those are two. Obviously, they lost the match with double nothing uh, last week. But uh, they, if anyone, you know, other than the Young Bucks, they they are real contenders. Uh, who says that they can't uh, vie for the championships? Uh, you know, next or maybe in the near future again. But uh, you know, they're 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 a talented team. They as singles competitors, they're also talented, and and obviously they have something brewing in the tag team division uh, soon. So yeah, this was uh, this did good in putting them over, I guess. But uh, the next one was the debut of Athena versus Kira Hogan, and predictably, Athena beat Kira Hogan because, you know, assuming she's going to be the next contender for the Dead TBS Championship. What do you think about this match? I think about the matches. I think about the matches, okay? It was, it was a great, like, a splash tag team matchup. It was a great squash tag team match. It made sense, and basically, basically like like Hobbs and Stark, they're gonna be put into a big feud soon. Yeah. So next we had Athena versus Kira Hogan, and Athena beats Kira Hogan in this match. Uh, 
you know, uh, it was predictable. Obviously, Athena versus uh, this is her debut match, and she's just supposed to win this. What do you think about Athena beating Kira Hogan? Uh, let's see. It was a good start. It was a, like, a good matchup. Like, Kira taking the loss was okay. She was mostly like, a, like taking the loss. It was to put over, like, like Athena. Athena was not supposed to lose because she's most likely to be one to challenge Jay Cargill for the, for the Women's TBS Championship. But most likely, like, mostly, like, like, Jay Cargill will face Athena at some point. But they want to build up Athena first. Right. Yes, and uh, I've seen some complaints or some comments on this match and saying, like, oh, why don't you put Athena against somebody better than Kara Hogan of all people? I mean, uh, one I would say to one thing that I would say to that is that Kara Hogan makes sense in terms of the story that is being told here. It's a kind of a rivalry going on between Athena. Uh, well, Athena's with Anna Jay and Kara, uh, Chris Tantlander. And then Kara Hogan is part of the baddies with Red Velvet and Jade Cargo. So it makes sense, one. And two, Athena needs to have a believable, you know, debut match. It's, it's supposed to, like, you know, put over Athena as a, you know, competitor, a, a believable competitor. And this is what it did. And and I think, uh, you know, Athena's a good contender for that TVS championship. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so next, oh, yeah. Something? No, I'm good. Okay, so the next was the House of Black. Uh, this was just a little, you know, promo segment, and it was just uh, the official induction of Julia Hart after she, you know, did that post-match angle with uh, with the mist on, at double or nothing, and she is now officially part of the House of Black. What do you think about this, if anything? Oh. This is a good thing. Like Julia Hart will be is not part of House of Black. It's gonna get bigger for House of Black going forward. I I see House of Black in the Forbidden Door pay per view, based on that trios match. Yeah, that so, that'll be oh. Yeah, that would that would be a good decision. I think uh, Malachi Black, especially Buddy Matthews, who's been in New Japan before and. Brody King, they they outfit that mold of you know New Japan, and they'll have a good match, I'm sure. And yeah, so hopefully this is this means better things for Julia Hart and and you know the House in Black in general. So yeah, that's good. So yeah. now we're going on to the next thing, which is the biggest you know announcement, the biggest thing and and, and rampage, at least the thing that's being talked about the most, and that's uh, CM Punk, the world champion, the AW world champion, came out and made an announcement. And it was a confusing announcement. Some people didn't really understand, and AW had to explain it afterwards with the with the documents. But now it's been all clear. CM Punk has announced that he's going not to relinquish the title, but to you know not be champion right now because he's he has a broken leg, broken foot, something with, along with his leg, broken tire. That's what he said, and he won't be you know defending that championship for right now. He's going to be inactive, and now they're going to have a interim championship tournament type thing. They're going to have a battle royal next week and everything. And then, you know, that winner, will, you know, whatever. It's a complicated thing, but there's going to be an interim championship in the near future. What do you think about this announcement? It's a huge announcement and everybody's talking about it. What do you think about CM Punk um, not being champion for the time being? I think about like, CM Punk getting injured and eh, somewhat bad with the interim champions repetitively, but they have probably, probably have no option. And CM Punk will come back from his injury and will face the interim champion in like a future unification match. Yeah, so now I think I'm going to ask you, uh, so obviously there's going to be a Battle Royal next week on Dynamite, and then in that main event, uh, the winner of that Battle Royal will go against John Moxley. So first question is, uh, who do you think is going to win that Battle Royal? I mean, it could be anyone now, and who's going to go against John Moxley, uh, in your opinion? In my opinion... I would go with like, I would go with like either Brian Danielson, or I would I would go on straight with Eddie Kingston. Like either one of these two can face John Moxley. Yeah, I I, I agree. I think uh, Brian Danielson for sure it would be an interesting matchup. Obviously, with them being both part of the Blackpool Combat Club, I think now with the type of wrestling that they're doing, more of a violent style wrestle. They could exemplify exactly what they want. 
and that would be a great match. Great, it's it's a it's a main event match for sure. Eddie Kingston, I've heard you know a lot of people on Twitter say that uh, that Eddie Kingston should be that next guy up, and that he's a perfect perfect guy for the interim championship. Um, I w- I don't know if I would agree with that. I'm not. I mean, I've said this before. I'm not really that much of an Eddie Kingston fan as much people are, but you know I could see that happening as well. I've heard Miro. A lot of people have said Miro about uh, winning this and putting him as a as a contender for the championship. I think is a good way to go. Wardlow is another one. Uh, he could win this. I think he should be the one going against John Max. He's he's the other one that uh, is high in the rankings. But uh, you know, it could be anyone in this case. It's a battle royal. It, anyone could win this, and hopefully, you know, it's an interesting decision for this. And the other side of the story would be at Dominion, Hiroshi Tana will go against Hiroki Goto. Uh, in this, uh, they're calling it the other side of the, you know, AW Eliminator match. You know, and who do you think is going to win there, Hiroshi Tanahashi or Hiroki Goto? You know. Yeah, who's going to win? Um, I'm going with Hiroshi Tanahashi. Is most likely happening. Like ta- Hiroshi Tanahashi is, is going to be at the Forbidden Door pay per view. It's probably going to be Hiro Hiroshi Hiro to grow to. Yeah, that, that, I agree. I think it's going to be Hiroshi Tanahashi. I think that was always the plan, and now they have to change it a little bit, make it more interesting. And I think, uh, yeah, Hiroshi Tanahashi is the guy that will go against the eventual winner of the John Moxley versus the Battle Royal winner. But uh, okay, so now you kind of fantasy booked that Hiroshi Tanahashi will go. Against, who do you, actually? No, I haven't asked you. Who do you think is going to win between John Moxley and, you know, let's say Brian Danielson if it's Brian Danielson? Hmm. I would go with. I would have Brian. I not Moxley to beat Brian Danielson to so go on to face Hiroshi Tanahashi. That was okay. his dream match, and we never seen it. We know what go face to face before, and it should happen at some point. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I think John Moxley should take the win there. Um, Brian Danielson could always go uh, for the AWGP Championship uh, against Kiroshi Tan- uh, uh, Kazushika Okada. But okay, so now you've booked to John Moxley versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. Who's going to be the next interim AEW World, World Champion, in your opinion? The AEW World Champion, in my opinion. Well, the next AEW World, Ch- World Champion, in my opinion, let's see, um, I want to go with Hiroshi Tanahashi. Like, he can win the title. And he can face Punk in a, a future unification title match. That would be that would be crazy. That would be, you know, if Hiroshi Tanahashi wins the interim world championship, that would be something that, you know, is unprecedented in AEW for sure. I it would be a it would be a surprise for sure. But uh, I think uh, fans would really like that decision. I would go with John Mox. I think John Mox is a great. You know, he has the aura. I saw this thing. Uh, he's like the undertaker of AW. You always, whenever you see him, he has this aura. He has this presence about him. And, and you know, it just exudes danger. And I like that. And I think he's he could very well carry the championship right now. He carried it during the pandemic. And he could carry it now while CM Punk is injured too. And John Moxley versus CM Punk is a huge match as well. But, you know, it could be anyone. It could be Hiroshi Tanahashi. It could be John Moxley. It could be someone else. We don't know, and this is what I guess what AW is intending to do. That we don't know exactly what's going to happen, and that's what's exciting about it, I suppose. Yeah. All right. So, if that's it, uh, that's all we're going to say about the CM Punk thing. We got one more match to discuss in the AW Rampage, and that, that's Scorpio Sky going against uh, Scorpio Sky versus Dante Martin at eight um, for the TNT Championship. And Scorpio Sky beat Dante Martin. What do you think about this match? Scorpio Sky won and retained his title. Well, the ma- it was a great matchup, even though no one, wa- no one kind of people have ignored it because it was after the it was after the CM Punk promo, and that kind of hurt the title match. But it was a good, but that that TNT title was really good. We didn't see no Guevara or or Kazarian in that match, so this is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think uh, the CM Punk, CM Punk announcement got people talking, and obviously, you know, there was uh, no time to kind of pay any attention to this. But it is a TNT Championship match, and 
obviously it's a little bit more refreshing that Scorpio Sky is being able to be presented as a TNT champion without, you know, the presence of Sammy Guevara or Frankie Kazarian, mostly Sammy Guevara. I think now that Scorpio Sky is going to be a true TNT champion against other competitors and be able to defend it uh, regularly is going to help him. Is um, Hopefully, you know, he has a good reign now. But uh, that's it for AW Rampage, I suppose. Uh, this, you know, this edition of it, this uh, June 3rd, you know, edition in Ontario, California. I wanted to discuss one piece of news. I, I think you saw this uh, Twitter thing. Go ahead. Okay. Um, the, I think you retweeted it. Uh, it's uh, the Tony Khan. He's speaking to the crowd in Ontario, California. And the crowd, you know, chanting MJF, MJF. You saw this video, yes? Yes. Uh, and, um, you know, it, it, it kind of like reminded me of the CM Punk chants from 2000, the, you know, the ones that we all know uh, when CM Punk was, you know, semi-retired out of the wrestling business. Um, and, you know, it was interesting how Tony Khan kind of responded to these chants. Uh, obviously, he does this, his things that he always does where he addresses the crowd, kind of trying to sell the, the matches. And they're shouting MGF, MGF, and he kind of cuts them off a little bit and says, hey, but somebody who is here, uh, so you know, some matches that will happen tonight. And that was kind of interesting to me. I, I it kind of, I did a tweet, uh, you know, earlier saying that that kind of yells to me that Tony Khan either is at really great odds against MGF. They're very much not in speaking terms or not in an agreement with each other. MGF is no longer part of the AW company anymore. That's that's another possibility, uh, or that uh, you know MGF will not be an AW for a while, at least in that show and for a while at least, because Tony Khan was very adamant and you know trying to cut off those chants and you know trying to sell what was going to happen in that show. Um, I, that I thought that was interesting. I don't. What what do you have to say about this? What are your kind of opinions since you saw this video? Mm-hmm. Uh, the opinions are like in this situation with, with Tony Khan and JF, it's gonna get like it'll get it'll probably be a work. I see it as a work because like Tony Khan and JF have sit down and probably NJF got into a big money deal, new deal. So this is mostly built toward work, a like, long term plan. I see NJF facing CM Punk for the WWE champion like after the unification. Yeah, I, I see. I see what you're saying. Uh, I think there's a possibility that is a work, and yeah, um, that's what most people are saying. But one thing that make makes it more kind of interesting to me, I guess, is that MJF told in that interview with Ariel Hawani, he said to Ariel Hawani that he isn't going to sign a new contract, and you know, before 2024, you know, or at least he's not going to sign a, a you know a contract that extends his contract past 2024 he says he's not even gonna look at it you know so that kind of like makes me not believe the fact that they sat down and you know worked on a new contract at least you know a contract that extends his current contract if they sat down and gave him more money i would believe that you know uh, but i don't think his contract will be extended at any point before 2024 and to me that you know to me, it's more of a of a shoot than a work. Honestly, I think uh, last week Tony Khan told them, "Jeff, you gotta address the fans, tell them exactly what you feel," and he did exactly that. And he, you know, asked them to fire him. And I think, you know, the fact that MJF was removed from, you know, the, the AW shop, you know, his merch isn't there anymore, and removed from the roster at the AW, you know, web page, is. To me, at least, is screams, shoots. Most people are saying screams work. Maybe I'm the one getting massively worked. I understand that. But to me, I think MGF is on his way out more than on the way in. But it's all, you yeah. know, we we know we know nothing right now, you know. It's kind of cool to kind of speculate, you know. Yeah, okay. Uh, do you have anything else to say or add about uh, this? Or will that be it? That will be it. Okay, everyone, this is the Ghost of Ali podcast. I'll see y'all next Saturday. Thank y'all. Bye-bye.